In this series, we're looking at the wonderful world of compute shaders. In the previous episode, we created a wireframe rendering of our mesh using a custom shader. However, models are often created using quads, and the extra line that you get from the triangulation can ruin the effect a little bit. So in this episode, we're going to extend our wireframe shader in order to only try and render quads where possible. Let's get started. In the last episode, we explained how the barometric coordinate system allows us to detect how close we are to an edge as we can see in the triangle de depicted here. For a quad, we are just considering two triangles next to each other, so we'll start by looking at a square. In our fragment shader, we're processing all of the triangles at once, harnessing the power of the GPU, but this means that we're operating on each individually, so we aren't able to query about the adjacent triangles. So if possible, we want a method that will work when considering the triangles in isolation. The key observation to make here is that in this case, and indeed most simple model cases, the edge we want to emit from our triangle is in fact the longest one. As you'll remember from the last episode, we render the line for each triangle so that the internal edges will be constructed with two lines and the externals with one. Our longest line removal property is true for both of the triangles in this case, so that works out nicely. However, on some meshes, like this triangulation of an octagon, this isn't always true. For the rectangle in the centre, the longest edge is correct for both triangles, so we can correctly remove that. On the segments at the top or bottom though, this isn't true for both triangles. The uh, topmost triangle, the longest edge highlighted in yellow, is the one you'll naturally want to remove, so that's all good. However, on the other triangle, the longest edge is the one that's also part of the rectangle, which we've highlighted in red. So if we remove the longest edge from each of these, we'll take off half of each of both of these lines. The result is that we'll still end up with triangles, though with our aliasing only on one side of the line. So they'll both look a little thinner. To improve this, you'd have to do a lot of pre-processing of the mesh to pair up triangles to quads. But we're after just a simple shader, so I think this is an acceptable compromise. We won't remove the leading diagonal from all quads, but at least the chances of us incorrectly removing a whole edge is very low. Going back to our triangle with barometric coordinates, how do we achieve this effect? We render the line when for our pixel, one of the values is close to zero, as that means it's close to the edge. So we want to ensure that this is never true for our chosen edge. The barometric coordinate is interpolated between each value seen at the vertex. So if we add in the vertex that controls our edge, which is the one opposite it, to all others like this, then the coordinate gets interpolated between one and one. So it will always be one, never getting close to zero, so will never be rendered. Let's look at the changes we'll need to make to the code to make this happen. Here you can see the vertex and geometry functions we created before. We only have to make changes in here, we don't need to touch the fragment shader at all. The first thing we'll have to change is the vertex representation in our V2F vert struct. Previously, we were transforming the raw world coordinates, which we need to do to render it on the camera. But we need to calculate edge length so we can calculate the longest one. So we need to retain the world coordinates for a little bit. So let's change the structure to remove the unity object to clip pos call. And now we can retain the functionality by putting the function call when we pass through the position to the G2F structs like this. This code is functionally the same as we started with, except now we have access to the raw vertex coordinates in the geometry function without having to transform them back again. We're looking to find the longest edge. So let's start by calculating the length of each edge. HLSL has a length intrinsic function that will do this for us. So all we need to do is take the difference between two vertices that make up the edge and apply the length function. So we'll start off with our modifier at zero. It may depend on your use case, but I don't want to be removing any edges where we have say an equilateral or an isosceles triangle, i.e. when there isn't a unique longest edge. To work out the longest edge, we just compare them to each other. If statements are often frowned upon in GPU programming because they're inefficient. However, we're not doing anything complicated within the if statements, just assigning a float, so the fact that we'll have to execute all code paths isn't really a performance issue for most people. Now we have our modifier, we can add it on to each of the barycentric coordinates we're creating. The eagle-eyed among you will notice that for the vertex edge we want to suppress, this means we'll actually end up with a 2 there rather than a 1. This actually doesn't matter, we'll now be interpolating between 2 and 1, so it still has the effect that we'll be never close to zero, thus never rendering the line. Jumping over now into Unity, we can see this in practice. 
As always, I've created a material using the wireframe quads shader, and we can see how this looks in action. Here we have the same scene from before, and this is what it looks like when I've updated the shader on the sphere and on the cube. In both of them, we've removed all of the diagonals and they look great. Finally, updating the windmill, we can see it's removed most of them, but there are a few cases where they remain, most notably on the octagonal shapes I demonstrated before. In any case, I hope you agree that it's still a great effect. As ever, the full code is linked in the description below, and I hope you found this information useful in some way. See you next time.